カードームのリング上 NWA 世界ヘビー級選手権Sixteen thousand seven hundred sixty-five fans at the Checker Dome in St. Louis. King Kong Brody, the challenger, referee Lee Warren. Instructions before the match begins: two out of three falls, one-hour time limit. Flair with that gaudy robe. What a sight he was coming into the ring. The gold belt. Think of the history behind that gold belt. You can trace it all the way back to. 1900 to people like Frank Gotch and George Hackenschmidt and through Strangler Lewis and to Luthez certainly, Whipper Billy Watson, Gene Kaniski, Wild Bill Longson, Pat O'Connor, Harley Race. And now into the match, it's Brody with a flying tackle, levels Flair a few minutes into the start of the match. Brody hoists Flair into the air with one arm body slam driving Flair right into the center of the canvas and Flair says, let me out of here, that one hurt. Referee Lee Warren keeping order as Ric Flair buying some time outside the ring. You know the early moments of this match will be a feeling out process. Touching, testing, seeing what's strong, what's weak, what, what way is he thinking, what's he looking for, what am I looking for, what can I attack. Right there, Brody certainly made a very strong statement that he had the power. That big body slam following a flying tackle and Flair taking as much time as he can outside the ring. Here was always the champion's advantage. Remember, the challenger has to win the championship. The challenger has to win the matchup. Draw is as good as a victory as far as the champion's concerned because he keeps the gold belt. So Flair is going to be a little cautious, but that's not the nature of Ric Flair. Ric Flair's nature is to gamble, to take chances. Will he take chances against somebody like King Kong Brody? They lock up in the center of the ring. Side headlock over the hip by Ric Flair. Head scissors by King Kong Brody. Brody with those powerful legs squeezing the head of Flair, and Flair can't kick out. King Kong Brody with those powerful legs right across the cheekbone and the chin of Ric Flair. Look at him push the power, push the strength, push the weight of his legs into the side of Flair's face, balancing up on his feet, twisting the head. Lee Warren right in there to check if Flair wants to give up. Of course, I don't think anybody would expect that to happen there, but the referee's job still is to ask. How did King Kong Brody develop those powerful legs? Believe me, I've seen it happen many times with him in both gyms, even in hotel rooms. Thousands and thousands of squats, sometimes with weights, sometimes even without weights. He was very concerned about flexibility. He would work the squats over and over and over. You can see why Ric Flair's trapped in there, literally trapped by the head scissors. Look where the knee is, right underneath the cheekbone, King Kong Brody. He's not going to rush into it either. And while we talked about the advantage the champion has because he has to be beaten, keep in mind this, it's a one hour match. And King Kong Brody knew he had cardiovascular conditioning and well, I won't say in his favor because Flair, that was also one of his strengths too, but Brody had no doubt he could go the length of time. Flair coming out with a headlock and Brody puts him right back in the head scissors. Excellent wrestling by King Kong Brody. 
Again, balancing up on one foot, put extra pressure in the neck. Anything you can do to make the man hurt somewhere, make a weakness, because he'll have to compensate. And when he compensates, that means there's an opening. King Kong Brody with the head scissors. Flair really locked down to the mat, but look, he's still always careful, trying to stay off his back, keeping the shoulder up, trying to twist around once more as he did the headstand before and came out with the headlock. But look where Brody's hands are, right behind Flair's head. Flair feels that pressure. Referee cautioning Brody, stay out of the tights. Flair balancing, trying to get the balance, but he can't get the leverage he needs simply because of the simple fact. Look where, well, look where his head is. You can see it popping out on the other side of Brody's knees, but that was all because of the pressure Brody was applying to the back of the head. Flair, however, off the ring general, rolling to the ropes. The referee not too impressed. That's not clearly entangled in the ropes. Flair decides that won't work, and he's still stuck in the head scissors of King Kong Brody. Flair, a former football player at the University of Minnesota before he went into wrestling, trained by the great Vern Gagne. Part of the class that Gagne trained, one of his teammates when Gagne was training young wrestlers was also Ken Patera. Now, Flair starting to pop that head out. The head's starting to come out. Now it's Flair who has some leverage. He's bending down on the ankles, and Brody gives up the head scissors. He's out, but Brody kicking away. There's the strength of that millions and millions of squats as Flair catapulted across the ring. Brody right on top of him. The crowd screamed. They're waiting for the volcano to explode. Lee Warren trying to keep Arter. Brody with an arm whip across the ring into the corner. Back body drop. Flair sailing high in the air in the checker dome before he crashes to the mat and then a kick to the head by King Kong Brody. Flair trying to come up and Brody with another boot right to the side of the face of Ric Flair. A punch to the stomach by Ric Flair. That slows up Brody. Headbutt to the stomach by Ric Flair. And then a very simple thing, just gouging the eye, and that takes a little of the balance, a little of the momentum away from King Kong Brody, trying to find his way around that ring, blinded momentarily, but lashes out with a boot. Right now it's a slugfest between Flair and Brody. Flair with an elbow to the top of Brody's head. And he pitches Brody through the ropes and out of the ring to the floor of the check home. But look at Brody stomping around the ring, angrily crawling back in. Do you want to play that way in that crowd? Standing, standing, screaming. Now it's Flair who bails out when it's Brody in the ring. Remember how that sequence started? It was Flair who threw Brody out. It ends up with Flair jumping out because Brody was on the warpath. And you can bet that Ric Flair, who lost that little test of wills right there, is going to use a full 20 count outside the ring. In different states at that time, back in 1983, there were different counts outside the ring. Illinois actually had a count of 10. In Missouri, it was 20. It varied from state to state, and that, of course, made it even harder on the top-line wrestlers because they were traveling all over the country. They had to remember slight rule changes, different things that would cause disqualifications. It was always a little bit different. It was always a test, a test, a challenge for the people inside the ring. Knee to the stomach. Big chop to the throat by Ric Flair. Flair grabbing the hair, slams Brody head first into the top turnbuckle. Brody sagging to the mat. Flair pounds right on the forehead of Rick, Rick Flair, right on the forehead of Brody. Rick Flair again pounding on Brody's forehead. Brody brought, brought to his feet by Flair. Arm whip. Elbow right underneath the chin. Brody was able to elude part of it and take it lower down on the chest where it might not cause as much damage. Whoop, whip reversed. Bear hug by King Kong Brody. The bear hug by Brody again. A power move by a power wrestler, King Kong Brody. He wore in checking. And for those fans who've been around, well, more than a few years, you might remember Yukon Eric. Back in the early 1950s, up through the early 1960s, it was the bear hug he'd use to win his matches. He'd squeeze a concession out of his opponent or cause them simply to become unconscious because he squeezed all the wind out. But Brody is looking for here. Oh, his Flair tries to go for the eye. Lee Warren trying to get a look, but Lee right now is a little bit shorter than the two wrestlers. I don't know if he can see the face of Brody. Brody bent over. Brody was trying to use that bear hug to take the wind out of Flair, just to take some of the stamina away. Both men a little groggy at the moment. Brody because his eye was gouged. Flair because he's trying to get some wind back. Flair though, quickly to the attack. 
He's going to pass up an opportunity to be on front of Brody. Going for the suplex. Going for the suplex, and Brody blocks it. Going for the suplex again. Brody blocks it. Brody was also a tough man to slam. Came, claimed that nobody could body slam him or suplex him. Flair couldn't do it there, but oh, look at this. Brody with a suplex on Flair. Flair tried the suplex, failed. Brody tried the suplex, and he scored with the suplex. Again, that crowd screaming. Brody lining him up, going to the air for a quick stop on the head of Ric Flair. The crowd was simply, simply dynamite that night at the Checkerdome. I remember it well. And even Ric Flair would tell you today it was one of his most favorite matches, one of his most favorite moments in wrestling because the St. Louis crowd was so intense, so filled with energy and excitement. It was like electricity inside that building. Herb Simmons, who's helped produce all these wrestling at the chase and classic St. Louis wrestling shows. Herb was at the card and he's always told me too. He said, I just couldn't sit. I could hardly sit down. It was just so exciting to be in that building. It was just like electricity throughout the crowd, all 16,765. Flair and Brody again going at it toe to toe. Brody knocked back into the corner by Flair. Flair grabbing the arm, trying the arm whip. Nope, Brody won't come. Brody won't come. He's hanging onto the rope. Flair can't pull him out of that corner. Trying, trying. Well, we'll take the chop to the throat and see if that works. No, Brody like the arch. Look at the balance he has, those legs spread, and Flair says, let me think about this. Again, a test of wills between Brody and Flair, something that Flair generally was able to do to an opponent he could not do to King Kong Brody right there in that instance. And it shakes him, it rattles him, it has to. He goes to the body slam, the body slam, but Flair, Flair can't get him up. Flair couldn't get Brody up, but Brody again. He gets Flair into the air. Walks halfway across the ring. Look at him high into the air. Oh, big body slam by King Kong Brody. Once more, Flair foiled. First he tried to slam Brody, couldn't do it, and then Brody slammed Flair. Flair quick to kick out at the count of one by Lee Warren. Front face lock by King Kong Brody. Simple hold, rest hold, hardly. Simple ones hurt the most. Ask anybody, ask Luthez, ask Pat O'Connor, ask Harley Race, ask any of the guys who've been around this business for any length of time, ask Ric Flair. How hard was it to breathe for Ric Flair right there? Brody's not strangling, but think of how he's pinching the cheeks together, leaning into him, bending his chin up into his own chest. Also now on top of 280 plus pounds on top of Flair's body as he tries to keep his shoulders up. Think of this the tremendous strain on the spine, on the neck of Ric Flair as King Kong Brody leans on him, uses his full weight. Again, trying to take some of the stamina away from Ric Flair. Balancing up, Lee Warren right there. Talk about good referee work. You talk about good referee work. Belly down, Joe Schoenberger. The great referee from St. Louis who was there on January the 7th, 1966, when Gene Kaniski dethroned Luthez for the World Heavyweight title at Keele Auditorium. Joe Schoenberger taught Lee and his brother Ed Warren refereeing. And one thing he always stressed was belly down. When a guy's got his shoulders down to the mat, you got to be down to the mat too. Your belly's got to be down so you can see both those shoulders. And Lee Warren did a textbook example of it right there. Shoulder blast to the stomach by Flair. Another chop to the throat. That's also been a staple of Flair's attack. Flair, flying mare, Brody down. Now it's Flair clamping the head of Brody, using some of Brody's own, own, own intentions on Brody, some of Brody's own strategy. Look where the elbows are. Either side of the cheekbone, pinching the mouth together, forcing Brody to try to breathe through his nose. Now they've already been in here 15 minutes. You know you're puffing and having trouble breathing right now. Think when your mouth is being squeezed together, it not only hurts, but it's hard to breathe. And that's what Ric Flair is trying to do to Brody. Really, both have probably recognized by this point that stamina was going to be the key part of this match. Who'd break first? Who'd run out of gas first? So part of the problem right now is try to slow the guy down, try to make him breathe hard, try to take some of his stamina away. Flair right back down, squeezing that head, squeezing the cheeks together. Ric Flair 
leaning on him. Look where his chest is. It's into the back, the neck of King Kong Brody. Brody reaching up for the hair. Lee Warren stopped him. Flair turning that head. King Kong Brody. And able at least to get his mouth open there, but you can see how the nose is pinched off. Now the whole face is contorted by Ric Flair as the champion. Applies this. Really, it's a face lock as much as anything. There's one of the many cameras at ringside. Almost 17,000 people at the famous Checker Dome, also known as the arena in St. Louis. Think of the history that went through that building. That was one of Sam Muchnick's first sellouts at the arena for Buddy Rogers, wrestling Luthez. He had a record crowd there many years ago, back in the 50s. Now it's Flair. He the Buddy Rogers of his era with an elbow drop on King Kong Brody. Brody kicks Flair off. Flair right back to the head. Right back to the head. Squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. Brody kicking. He knows he doesn't want to be trapped down there. No matter how big, no matter how big, how strong, how tough you are, you can't breathe. If you're gasping for wind, you're vulnerable. And it only takes a count of three to get a pin. Could be a small package, could be a front rolling cradle, could be a little sunset flip. You never know how that pin's going to come. And there, once again, putting the shoulders down. You never know, you might get lucky. Look at Lee Warren right in there again. Look how his head is. Look where he is, right? Look at those shoulders. King Kong Brody struggling to keep the shoulders up as Lee Warren's right in there. And Flair hoping he can catch a lucky break. You never know when lightning will strike. Rick Flair. Leaning into Brody, Brody struggling to come up. A real test. A test of more than just physical skill. It's a test of who wants it? Who's got the most guts? King Kong Brody or Ric Flair? Flair staying on top of him. Probably hooked the arm on the far side now. Yes, he has a little bit. But Brody so strong, trying to come up. Fans intent. They've not often seen King Kong Brody wrestle to the mat like Ric Flair just did. Brody trying to fight back. Flair pounding on the back. Brody pounds in the stomach. Chop again to the throat. Ric Flair. Side headlock. Off the ropes comes Brody. Flying tackle levels the world champion. Over the top. Leapfrog by the world champion. Hip toss and down goes Brody. Ric Flair backing up. Coming for the elbow drop and he misses as Brody rolls away. Just when it looked like Flair had something going, Brody bounces back, avoids the flying elbow drop and vicious, vicious kicks to the head by King Kong Brody. Brody, another boot right to the head. You think that there are cobwebs in Ric Flair's head right now. Brody going up on the ropes so he can come down and assault the world heavyweight champion. Big chop right to the top of the noggin. And Flair goes down. Flair in trouble here. He opened up the attack and now he's paying the price. He opened it up. He opened up the offense and it's Brody coming back. Oh, big forearm smash. Look at Lee Warren point. That was the forearm, worse than the fist. That big forearm bone to the cheek. But Flair, he never quits. We all know that. Flying tackle, it doesn't work. Brody levels him. He's leaning forward so he caught him with the shoulder. Flair tries again. Walks right into it. Walks right into it. A big body slam by King Kong Brody. Oh, he lines him up. Flair, look out below. The giant flying knee drop. Flair crushed to the mat by King Kong Brody. The crowd standing. They sense it. Count of one, two, three. There's the first fall. The first fall belonging to King Kong Brody. The crowd standing, screaming. Will they see the title change hands tonight? On February the 11th, 1983 at the Checker Dome, will the title change hands tonight? Will King Kong Brody become the champion? The winner of the first fall, King Kong Brody! King Kong Brody, realizing he's on the edge of realizing a dream. Could that moment be here, something he always wanted? Could Ric Flair be on the verge of defeat? Could the World Heavyweight Championship, when it still meant something, be ready to change hands? And Ric Flair going, wow, I'm in a lot of trouble. Down one fall to none. He's taken a tremendous giant flying knee drop and foiled in many of the moves he tried to make. 
The funny thing was at one point, Flair was in control when he was able to get Brody off his feet and wrestle him. Flair was in control there, but once he made the mistake of opening up the offense, it was Brody's offense that took charge. An interesting match as you look at it too, because in some ways you're seeing different things than you would expect from these two people. And I think looking back to it and having talked to both Brody and Flair in intervening years, I think there was so much respect both ways between Ric Flair and King Kong Brody for what each one could do well. It almost intimidated the other man where he held back just a little bit for fear of making a mistake like that one where Brody ran into the knee lift right into the stomach. I think they were both afraid of making the big mistake. And maybe that slowed them up, made them a little bit more cautious than normal. Flair throwing Brody outside the ring, now grabbing him by the hair, Brody grabbing Flair's ankles, Flair afraid to let go because if he does he's coming outside the ring with Brody in control of his legs, we don't want that if you're, you're Rick Flair. Flair takes Brody into the top rope, jerks it down into his throat almost like a judo chop. And now Brody gasping for a bit of win. Ric Flair has to win a fall. He's down one fall to none. He knows now the pressure's on him. The shoe is definitely on the other foot. Flair punishing the windpipe of, Rick, of, of King Kong Brody. Again, breathing, stamina becoming so important. Flair grabbing the arm. Ooh, a punch right into the short rib. Again, attacking that side, the ribs. Trying to hurt Brody where every man, no matter how strong, no matter how many muscles he has, they're vulnerable there. Brody caught in the corner by Ric Flair. Flair leaning into him, trying to stay close to him, trying to take away the size advantage that Brody has, the strength advantage. We talk about a strength advantage for King Kong Brody, sure, but let's not kid ourselves. That doesn't mean Ric Flair was weak. To the contrary, Ric Flair was a finely tuned athlete at the height of his skills right now as the world heavyweight champion. He hooks the arm, basic arm lock now, trying to punish the shoulder a little bit. Can he weaken? Even if it's only 5%. Even if it's only 5%, can he weaken one side of King Kong Brody, where Brody would favor it and open up? Open up a spot where Flair could attack and perhaps get a pin to even this match at one fall apiece. Twisting the arm, turning the wrist, bending the hand back, anything to punish King Kong Brody. And once again here, just as in the first fall, Ric Flair, his wrestling ability coming to the forefront and creating a problem for King Kong Brody. Knee drop right into the elbow. Well, here's a story most people don't know about King Kong Brody. Probably about this point in his career was when that left elbow of Brody was actually broken. He had a hairline fracture in the elbow he never took time off for because this is professional wrestling. You don't get to go on the disabled list. You don't keep making $10 million a year when you're sitting at home cutting your fingernails. You have to work if you want to make money. Brody's left elbow had a lot of punishment over the years, and by the time before he passed away in 1988, I would guess in early 87, he showed me how his left hand had basically developed what they call claw fingers. The feeling had come out of the ring finger and the little finger. He couldn't move it. And that was because of all of the punishment of wrestling. And here was Flair working on that left arm. He knew that a lot of the bumps that Brody took, because Brody was willing to take to the air with drop kicks and the giant flying knee drop, a lot of that also meant landing on that elbow pointed down there. So that elbow had to be sore and hurting. And Brody also admitted over a period of time that's obviously what caused that elbow bone to crack. He knew had he lived, he was looking at an elbow replacement somewhere probably in the early 90s. Flair pulling back on the arm, a classic double arm lock. Looks like Johnny Valentine there, doesn't he? Pulling back on that arm. Ric Flair pulling back on the arm, trying to punish King Kong Brody. And again, the wrestling skill of Flair paying off for him. Brody never made any bones about it. He never considered himself a great scientific wrestler. He got by on power, brute strength, and simple will. He wasn't going to quit. He had a big, as big a heart as anybody inside that ring. There's Flair rubbing the bone of his knee into the bone of, of Brody's elbow. Is that Flair's, Flair's knee into Brody's elbow. Let's get that straight. Charlie Regal and Herb Simpson keeping an eye on here, me here to make sure I do this right. Where's Mickey Garagiola when you need him? He's probably smoking a cigar. Ooh, look at the punishment on that arm. Look at Flair using the leverage to punish the arm of King Kong Brody. Brody stretched back. Look how the shoulders almost pull out of the socket. Flair leaning into 245 pounds of Ric Flair. 
A tremendous punishment into that elbow of King Kong Brody. Bending backward, looking for the ropes for a little extra leverage. Did Lee Warren catch him? Yes, he did. He caught Flair using the ropes for some extra leverage. A kick into the rib by Ric Flair. Brody fighting back. Pushed to the corner, pushed to the ropes rather by Ric Flair. Flair staying in tight to him. The referee trying to separate them again. Flair leery of giving Brody too much room. He's got his arm tied over the top rope. Finally chased back. Oh no, it's Brody who has a hold of Flair's nose. Brody with a nose lock and then a forearm right across the forehead of Ric Flair. Flair fighting back. He doesn't want to lose the advantage he has. But Brody, knowing a lot's at stake here, he just gouges the eyes. No bones about it. This is a clawing, fighting, scratching moment in professional wrestling inside that Checker Dome ring. The World Heavyweight Championship at stake. King Kong Brody with the first and thus far only fall. Again, gouging the face, twisting the nose of Ric Flair. Brody knew he was getting into trouble and he was going to stop it. Clawing away at each other, knowing the stakes. We sat down and tried to figure out the payday. Let's talk about it a little bit in the book Wrestling at the Chase. We talked about the payoff Sam Muchnikov's had. The main event got 8% of the growth, so this match alone was probably worth ten dollars to $12,000 to these two men. But think how much more it was worth to be the world heavyweight champion. Think how much more it was worth to have 10 pounds of gold around your waist. Multiply 10,000 or 12,000 a hundred times, and then maybe you have the answer. Brody down on top of Flair, he was biting him. Brody tossing caution away. He knew he wasn't going to be able to wrestle with Flair. He would have to make Flair wrestle his match, which was a brawl. And here we are outside the ring. Flair trying to get away from Brody. Brody stalking him. Flair rolling back in. Can he get there? Brody bringing him back out on the floor. King Kong Brody up one fall to none, going after the world heavyweight champion. Chip and he slams Flair. Flair got his shoulder up, blocking his head at least from hitting the steel ring post. Flair trying to stay away from Brody outside the ring. This is not where you want to be with King Kong Brody in no man's land outside the squared circle. Brody squeezing Flair's arms around the steel ring post trying to punish that shoulder. He'll take advantage of any edge he can get. Flair tries to fight back though. Brody and Flair both back inside the ring. Brody hits the ropes. Oh, a big kick to the stomach. Flair was expecting a flying tackle. Instead, he got the boot into the belly. Right into the bread basket by King Kong Brody. And then Brody walks into a vicious elbow right underneath the chin. A knockout punch from Ric Flair. A knockout elbow from Ric Flair and then driving the knee down across the forehead of Brody. A favorite, favorite Flair move. The knee drop to the forehead of King Kong Brody. Flair trying to follow up his advantage. They come to their feet. Trying to arm whip Brody out of that corner. It's not easy. Brody reverses the whip. Oh, and Flair hits the shoulder and bicep that went into the steel ring post. And now Brody begins chopping on the shoulder and arm of Ric Flair. Any opening you get, you have to take advantage. This is for all the marbles. This is it. There's nothing higher than this that you can fight for. So you'll scratch and claw. And you'll break the rules if you have to. Whoa, oh, knee drop miss. Knee drop miss. Knee drop for Flair's head missed. Flair going for the pile driver. Flair going for the pile driver. Can he get him up? No, look at the balance that Brody has. Brody taking the leverage away from Flair, lifting, oh, oh, look at that, dead body weight. All in the neck, think of the strength that took. Flair wasn't jumping, he was lifted by King Kong Brody with his neck and flipped over the top when Flair tried a pile driver. To the ropes goes Flair. Drop kick by King Kong Brody, a man that size, 6'5", 285 pounds. He used to weigh 320, but he trimmed down by this point in his career knowing that speed and stamina were so important against opponents like Ric Flair. Still, what a feat to get in the air for a drop kick like that against Ric Flair. Flair with his foot on the ropes. There'll be no pin there. It's not going to be two straight falls for King Kong Brody. Brody didn't realize that Flair's foot was on the ropes. Lee Warren trying to explain it to him. And that's not the easiest thing to do. If you're inside the ring and you have almost 17,000 people screaming, it's hard to hear each other. 
you know, the guys right there say his foot was on the ropes, and Brody's probably saying, what, what? Brody pounds Flair into the corner. It looks like the tide has turned a little bit. Brody more in charge now, but Flair fighting back with a boot. Ooh, and it knocks Brody through the ropes and onto the floor. Lee Warren beginning the 20 count. It's 10 on the apron, 20 on the floor. Brody on the floor of the checker dome. Coming back in, Flair right there to greet him, and it's not a friendly greeting. Going for the suplex, going for the suplex on King Kong Brody again. Brody blocks the suplex. Once more, Flair foiled as he tries to use the suplex on King Kong Brody, and that would have been devastating if he could have done it there. Whoa, he misses a punch, and Brody fights back. Brody furiously pounding on Ric Flair. Brody on Flair. Flair staggered, throws a wild punch. Both men back off a bit, and then a kick from Brody pushes Flair back into the corner. Not pretty, it's not pretty, it's vicious. It's sometimes crude, always rough, but it's vicious because the World Heavyweight Championship is at stake. King Kong Brody twisting the face of Flair as he mounted the rope so he could pound on Flair. Brody stumbled down. Flair may have landed a chop to the stomach as Brody was up there on the ropes. Flair grabbing Brody's hair, going for the suplex, going for the suplex. Oh, he got him up. He got him up. Ric Flair finally delivered the suplex to King Kong Brody. This could be it. The falls could be even. Kind of one, two, and oh, Brody kicks free. After all the times that Ric Flair tried with that suplex and couldn't do it, finally he electrifies the Checker Dome crowd by delivering the suplex to King Kong Brody, and Brody is shaken. Brody is shaken. That was nearly the evening fall. He came within a quarter of a count of making it one fall apiece. Elbow drop by Flair, trying for the pin. Count of two, count of, and Brody kicks out again. King Kong Brody hurt after Flair delivered the suplex. Flair going behind him, pulling the hair back. What does Flair have in mind? Going for the abdominal stretch. The abdominal stretch on King Kong Brody. Not an easy hold to get on somebody like Brody because of the strength, the length of his body. Once upon a time, back in the 50s and 60s, this was a killer, a killer submission hold for a gentleman by the name of Wilbur Snyder, who ought to be in the Hall of Fame of Wrestling if he isn't. Wilbur Snyder popularized the abdominal stretch. By now, a lot of people knew that flexibility was a key, and certainly Brody was one of the first big men to realize it. And that's why the abdominal stretch here is not getting a submission because Brody worked constantly on flexibility, just as Flair did. Flair perhaps not realizing how much effort Brody put into that, and the abdominal stretch perhaps not as effective as Flair thought it would be on King Kong Brody. He thought Brody was hurting after that suplex, and he probably still is, and this puts pressure in the same place as the suplex rattled. But now the abdominal stretch, he can't get the submission. He can't get the submission from King Kong Brody. Lee Warren's right there to check it. Brody, what's he doing? Is he trying to move out of it? Yeah, he's getting that top arm free. Brody moving behind Flair, and he has the opposite arm of Flair. Oh, what do we have here? It's Brody reversing the abdominal stretch under Ric Flair. Ric Flair now, he's the one trapped in the abdominal stretch by King Kong Brody. It's not exactly textbook by Brody, but it's an abdominal stretch, and he's twisting Flair pretty successfully. Not enough to get a submission, not quite. He can't quite get underneath him, but from Brody's standpoint, what he's done, he's escaped the suplex that nearly pinned him. He's escaped the abdominal stretch that caused him trouble. He's dodged a bullet, and he's still up one fall to none over Ric Flair. Two falls out of three for the world heavyweight championship. Both men starting to feel the effects of this match now. We're nearly at 40 minutes into the match. Think of the energy, think of the conditioning that's being tested here between Flair and Brody. Flair getting right on top of him. Flair's had his best success when he stayed on top of him and Brody couldn't use his longer arms and his longer legs and couldn't unleash all of his violence onto Ric Flair. Brody pushed into the corner by Flair. Flair strangling Brody. Making no bones about it, he's willing to work the count of five before disqualification. He breaks at four. Five would be a disqualification. Lee Warren and Ric Flair, toe-to-toe, nose-to-nose. 
Flair on top of Brody. Grabbing him by the throat again. He's going to work that count as far as he can. Warren trying to break him up because now Brody's strangling Flair. Both men strangling each other. You talk about going for everything you can. Oh, hang him high. Hang him high by King Kong. Brody shades of Big Bill Miller right there as he lifted Flair by the throat and flung him across the ring like a sack of potatoes. Flair made the mistake of going into the power matchup with Brody, and that never worked. Big forearm smashes right onto the chest of Flair. Quick try for a pin by Brody, but Flair, hey, he was down for two. You never know. You never know. Flair trying to come to his feet, frustrated, surely at this point, because when he got that suplex, he had to think, oh, this is it. I have Brody going for the pile driver. Brody looking for the pile driver. Flair trying to scoot to the ropes and get away. Oh, yes, Flair knew one thing he didn't want there was to have his head driven into that checkered old mat. That could have been curtains for Ric Flair and his reign as world heavyweight champion. Again, toe to toe, Flair and Brody, Flair and Brody. Brody pushing Flair towards the ropes. Trying to use his power on him, whipping him across the ring. Oh, Flair nearly catapulted over the top rope. Hung out to dry like Monday morning's wash. Ric Flair upside down, hanging in the corner. Hanging in the corner, vulnerable for Brody. Driving both forearms right into the ribs of Ric Flair. Oh, now it's Flair. Flair in deep. Deep trouble, down one fall to none. He can't lose this fall. And Brody's going to try to punish Flair. And Flair is going to try to hang onto those ropes and stay in that corner. The last place Ric Flair wants to be right now is in the middle of the ring where he can't get to the ropes to break a potential count of three. Brody bringing Flair up. You can see the match taking its toll on both men now. We're well at the 40 minute mark. Elbow smashed to the head of Ric Flair. Look how good of a ring general Flair is, though, as he tried to stay by the ropes, but now Brody realized it cuts him off from the ropes, and Flair is forced to back up into the middle of the ring. Not where he wanted to be. Not where Ric Flair wanted to be as Brody bangs on the head. Brody with another smash to the head of Ric Flair. Flair taking his lumps at the hands of King Kong Brody. Flair, oh. And he come up, and Brody's got to be thinking right now, if I could land one more big knee, one more big knee, that gold belt's going around my waist. Flair groggy, throws a wild punch and misses again. He's knocked in the corner, jumps out of the ring, just simply going for the eyes of Brody. Desperation right there by the World Heavyweight Championship, trying to keep his reign alive. Brody lifting Flair, one more big body slam, throwing him far away from his body. How many body slams has Flair taken in this match? Six, seven, eight? Think they don't take a call, the big knee drop, he misses! Brody missing the knee drop. Flair having enough attention to roll away and Brody misses the knee drop. How often did you ever see that? Brody was so good, so good at sensing when his opponent was vulnerable for that knee drop. He was wrong there. He was wrong because Ric Flair was able to pull a rabbit out of the hat and get away from the flying knee drop of King Kong Brody. Brody. Now he's the one in real trouble. How often did he miss that? And that knee has to be aching, throbbing. And when it came down, and Flair goes right to the attack. Rick Flair viciously going after King Kong Brody. Brody by the ropes. He could buy some time outside the ring now. Look at him hobbling on that leg, stretching out, trying to stretch out the cramps in the hamstring of the quadriceps. That hurt Brody as much as the guy underneath it would have been crushed. Brody, grabbed by the hair, pulled to the apron by Ric Flair. Oh, into the turnbuckle by Ric Flair. Again, Flair slamming the head into the turnbuckle. Two things have been proven here so far. Number one, Brody was able to withstand the good scientific wrestler and still hang in there. He hasn't lost a fall. He's up one fall to none, and Ric Flair has proven beyond any shadow of a doubt. He's one tough cookie. Flair standing with Brody. Flair and Brody again. Maybe the fifth or sixth time in this match. Flair and Brody toe to toe, battling it out. Neither man willing to give an inch, but it's Brody taking command with big forearms and punches. 
Flair leaned into the ropes. An uppercut by Brody and Flair knocked clear over the top rope and down to the floor. An uppercut by Brody. Almost that European style uppercut that Dory Funk Jr. used to use. Brody going out after Flair. Flair trips Brody. Flair and Brody outside the ring. Flair and Brody on the floor of the checker dome. A chop to the throat. Flair and Brody battling once more. Neither man willing to give an inch. Flair crawling to the apron. The referee making the count on both men. It's 20 because they're on the floor. A count of 20 on both Flair and Brody. They're up on the apron. Flair and Brody, the count's still going on. Flair lands a chap. Brody lands a punch. They're trading blows back and forth. Flair pounding on Brody. Brody ducks beneath Flair, backdrops him to get away from him. Tumbles off the apron. The referee making the count. He's calling for the bell. When did he get to 20? Obviously, when Brody was still outside the ring and Flair had been catapulted inside the ring. Let's get that official announcement as Lee Warren explains to me exactly why he did what he did. In 22 minutes and 40 seconds, at the count of 18, Ric Flair was back in the ring. But King Kong Brody was still outside at the count of 20. Therefore, Brody is counted out outside the ring, and the winner of the second fall is Rick Flair. Rick Flair has even the match at one fall apiece. One fall apiece, almost a fluke. A mistake, I guess some could say, but as they furiously battled on the apron, Brody did what was logically, ducked underneath and flipped the man up into the air. King Kong Brody realizing now it was a mistake, but not a mistake that he really made. It's one of those things that happen when you have a showdown between two of the greatest athletes, two of the greatest competitors in the history of the business. That time it worked in Ric Flair's advantage. Ric Flair wins the second fall as Brody is counted out outside the ring. One fall apiece, one fall apiece. Brody knows what he has to do. He needs to win this fall to become the world heavyweight champion. He needs this fall. Flair, he'd like a win, he'd like a pin, but he settled for staying alive too because he still had the gold belt. He takes a few more of those forearms in the head though. He won't be staying anywhere except in an ambulance on a ride to the hospital. Brody with his boot underneath the jaw, digging, digging on Ric Flair, the world champion. Flair, so exhausted that he was able to come up with that big fall that he desperately needed to tie this match at one fall apiece. Brody again, trying to punish the windpipe of Ric Flair. Flair, gasping, but he's still staying by the ropes. Brody wants to get him out of that corner, but he wants to punish him too. King Kong Brody in that position now where you want to do 20 different things at the same time. You want to slam him, you want to pull him, you want to punch him, you want to kick him, you want to get him in the middle, you want to strangle him over the ropes. The hardest part now is controlling yourself mentally, emotionally. That crowd screaming, screaming, screaming. Wanting more, wanting to see the title change, it's funny. Even when the world champion was a popular figure, in the days of a Luthez, of a Pat O'Connor, of a Dory Funk Jr., there came a time when everybody wants to see that title change. It didn't happen very often back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Not like today where it happens every other week. So it meant something, it meant something. Dory Funk Jr. had a four and a half year reign as the world heavyweight champion. Harley Race had a four-year reign as the world heavyweight champion. Jack Briscoe had the title over two years. It meant something when the belt changed hands. And St. Louis, over the years, was blessed by seeing many title changes. I guess the last two before that were Kaniski over Thez, and then in 1959, Pat O'Connor over Dick Hutton. Flair pitches Brody to the ropes, flying tack. Ooh, good bounce there. Here comes Brody again. Flair looking for the sleeper hold, something he never was really known for, but something he knew the rudiments of, the basics of, Anything right now to slow down Brody, to eat up some time, that's what Ric Flair wanted. He squeezes with the sleeper hold. He squeezes with the sleeper hold. If he can get the right leverage and put Brody out, all the better. But this has a two-fold purpose for a KG ring general like Ric Flair. Flair with that sleeper, 
trying to take away from the clock, trying to take away from what's left of the energy of King Kong Brody. After this match, Brody told me, he says it was, he told me it was three days until he felt like a human being. He says every muscle hurt the next morning. He says, and I know Flair felt the same way. And Lee Warren said, I lost close to 10 pounds sweating in that ring, jumping up and down, belly down, trying to count, trying to stay on top of the action, trying not to get trampled by these two guys. Brody, leaning forward, look how Flair, look where that shoulder is. Pushing into the head, pushing the chin down. Once again, we talk about the subtle little movements in wrestling, trying to take the ability to breathe away from your opponent. Ric Flair is doing that without a strangle. The real pressure is on the side of the neck, just where a sleeper hold should be, trying to cut the blood flow off. Of course, Brody's neck was about as big as a telephone pole, so that's not the easiest thing to do. Flair with the sleeper hold. Brody, still very much in it, but feeling some of the effects. Trying to keep the blood flow right there, just moving his hands, moving his arms, trying to keep alive, knowing he has to break out of this. He needs this fall. He needs this fall, and there's one way to do it. He ran towards the corner and ran with Flair right into the top turnbuckle. Flair hung on to the last second when he realized that the superior weight of Brody was pulling him towards the corner. It was almost too late to move. But he still has the advantage. Flying mare by Ric Flair. Staggers to the corner. Goes for an elbow drop that misses. The elbow drop misses by Flair. Is this Brody's opening? Flair coming up quickly, though. Misses with a roundhouse. And then it's Brody trying to squeeze the head of Flair. I don't know how much Brody knew about the sleeper hold, but he knew if you squeeze a man's blood supply to his brain, you might be able to make him pass out. And basically, he's just squeezing the neck as hard as he can right there. It's brutish, it's powerful, but it's effective as Brody squeezes, squeezes, squeezes the neck of Ric Flair, and Flair goes down to one knee. Maybe he can get on top of him, maybe he can wear him down. You look back at some of the great title matches over history, sometimes they ended on very quick pins on things that people would never have expected. Just very simple things, body press, if they could catch the right leverage and catch the right moment. Now you're looking at a match that's gone 50 minutes, well over 50 minutes they've been in that ring. Let me tell you, nobody's ready to go out dancing right now. Brody on top of him trying to push the shoulders down, and Ric Flair. <laughs> so smart. Saw that rope there. Let Brody feel good about it, and then Ric Flair drops his boot on the bottom rope, and Lee Warren has to call for a break. Brody rolls away from Flair. If they respected each other before they were in the ring against each other, how much respect do you think they had for each other after they knocked heads for almost an hour? Ric Flair and King Kong Brody. Flair trying to get his win back. Brody trying to make that brain click, click, click. What can I do? What can I do to break this man? What can I do to knock him off the throne? Again, basic hard wrestling, body slam. One more time, trying to wear Flair down, lining him up. Oh, going for the leg drop, the guillotine leg drop rather than the big knee drop. That probably says something right there that Brody didn't go for the knee drop. He went for the guillotine leg drop. Flair goes for the figure four. Flair going for the figure four leg lock on King Kong Brody because he realized when Brody didn't go for the knee drop, that meant his knee was hurting. He's vulnerable and Ric Flair knew it. Flair right to the figure four leg lock. When Brody didn't go for the flying knee drop, Ric Flair, so smart, he realized that King Kong Brody's knee was vulnerable and here's Flair with the figure four leg lock. Can he get a submission out of King Kong Brody? Can he put enough pain to make Brody lean back, maybe let his shoulders inadvertently fall on the mat for a three count. Flair stretching, straining, trying to do everything he can to the ligaments, the meniscus in King Kong Brody's knee, but now Brody trying to roll Flair over. Brody trying to reverse it. King Kong Brody reversing the figure four leg lock. Can he take it over? Yes, and puts the pressure on Ric Flair. The pressure on Flair is Brody. Puts all that pressure into the leg of Ric Flair before Flair pops out of the hole. And now both men, a little gimpy after the figure four leg lock, reversed and in its original position, has taken a toll on both Flair and Brody. Flair coming up on top of Brody and begins pounding, pounding, pounding on the head of King Kong Brody. Brody says, I can play that game better than any man alive. King Kong Brody on his feet. Raining forearms down on the head of Flair, going for the pile driver. He couldn't get it before. Can he get the pile driver on Ric Flair this time? 
Yes, he's got him in the air. Look out below as Brody with the pile driver. Oh, ramming the neck and head of Flair into the mat, making sure he had all the leverage in the world as he tried to knock Flair's head right down into his shoulders. This could be at the count of one, count of two, and no. Flair with his boot across the bottom rope. Brody sees it, he knows it, it was a good call. Here he finally got that pile driver, which he tried once earlier in the match, and Flair was able to scoot to the ropes. Elbow drop, not something you often saw from Brody, but it's desperation time now. Desperation time now, and Brody taking any chance he can. Throwing that elbow and missing. Both men having trouble coming to their feet, trying to find a way. Flair with a chop. Arm whip, Brody to the ropes. Ducks, comes off, big boot, right to the face of Ric Flair. Brody coming off with that signature, big kick to the face. Another kick right to the solar plexus by Brody. Brody whipping him to the ropes, another boot to the head, and Flair is down. Is he down for the count? Look at him fight, look at him struggle to come back up after all that punishment from King Kong Brody. One more body slam, no, a backbreaker. A backbreaker, shades of Gene Kaniski. The backbreaker, beautifully delivered by Brody, not even realizing where he is right now. They're close to the ropes. Flair didn't know he was that close either, and he kicked out, not knowing he could have taken the easy way out. There's no room for error here. Flair, looking maybe he could come down from the top on Brody, who came to his feet slowly, but Brody's there waiting. Brody's there waiting with Flair. Sailing through the sky inside the checkered omits, Ric Flair, compliments of King Kong Brody. Big forearm to the face, Brody leery of going for that knee drop. Think back to that, mix, that missed knee drop earlier and what a key part of the match that was. Brody obviously had hurt his knee and he was leery of going for the giant knee drop anymore, especially after the figure four leg lock. Flair was able to take one of the signature moves away from King Kong Brody. Brody going for the suplex on Flair. Time running out. Brody going for the suplex. He has him up in the air. Drives him down. Drives him down with the suplex. Going for the pin. Can he get there? Can he get there? No, the referee, the bell has sounded. The bell has sounded. One hour has expired as Flair and Brody went at each other, hammer and tong, and here it is. The one hour time limit expired with each man having won a fall. The match between King Kong Brody and Ric Flair is a draw. And Ric Flair retains the world Heavyweight title. Rick Flair, still the champion. The gold belt going back to Flair on the night of that classic battle.